Hello everybody, welcome back to Liz Labs. Today we're going to be talking about something a little bit different. I say that every single time I do a Liz Lab because I really can't make up my mind on exactly what I want to focus in on Liz Labs. So we just kind of focus in on whatever strikes me as I want to talk about, kind of. I mean, as you can see, I'm being very organized in all of this. Very scientific. So everybody break out your, um, your... Sounds like somebody broke out of something. Um, break out your tablets, your papers, your pin, your pens, and write down some tips for you guys later. Times have changed. The zombie apocalypse is here. Do we run? Do we hide? Or do we adapt and build? Do we survive? Um, there has been a question about how do you tell from the outside of a POI what kind of tier you're getting yourself into? Well, there's really not, except that most of them are scaled according to the size. Now, the issue with that is, is on the outside, it might look like a tiny little house. And when you get inside there, you realize there's a huge back cave underneath it. And you were, weren't really carrying that much ammo. So, still very, very hard to tell from the outside of a building what tier POI it is. But the good news is, is you can also go inside, find the loot discover what type of loot container it is, and then you know what kind of POI it is. So if you want to, say, I don't know, milk a POI for a specific type of loot or something like that, I can't really think of a reason why you would want to, but in case there is a reason to do so, like you really want to run that POI in a mission. Say uh, it, it's one of the nighttime missions, and you've never done a nighttime mission in this particular POI. Well, what level is it? What do you need to get your trader up to in order to do that one as a mission so you can do the full mission quest pushing all the buttons turning on all the lights restoring the power um in order to tell which level of poi you're working with you can tell by the loot container at the very very end uh right here we've got a tier one loot a tier two a tier three a tier four and a big mama jama right here with a tier five poi loot container this is kind of how you can tell which tier you're looking for. And now since you can maximize one of your traders and then go back and say, hey, I would like to do a tier one or I'd rather do, I don't know, a tier four POI because I actually want to try and see what it's like to do the restore power quest in this particular one. Well, now you can say, okay, well, it was a tier two and it was this particular distance away from my trader so if I look for a tier two this far away from my trader maybe it'll be the one that I'm looking for so that is how you can kind of do that plus after you go through the entire POI if you're kind of just standing there like I don't understand what exactly I just got myself into I went through this really big POI and there was this kind of container in there and I don't understand things who knows maybe it was a glitch maybe it needs to be bug reported not sure but this is one way in which you can tell what kind of POI you got yourself into um, and in the case of a remnant, you may not even find one of these types of containers at all. You might just find a couple of bags and that's it. And that would be considered what the Fun Pips considered a remnant POI and therefore it did not actually have a loot container in it. Okay, and for the next part of the tutorial, I guess, on this particular episode, um, there has been a lot of changes. And I say a lot, not really a lot, but some new additions to... Uh, some of the things that you could find basic materials in. For anybody who is new to the game, this might be extremely useful. And those who are coming back after a long rest period, maybe it's a refresher. Um, there are several types of materials that are kind of hard to get at the beginning part of the game. One of those is forged steel. I mean, forged iron, brass, and forged steel. Those are like the three kind that at the very beginning might be kind of difficult to get a hold to. Say you're trying to build your first workbench, or your first vehicle, or maybe one of your uh, drones or something like that, and you're looking for just a little bit of forged steel, but you don't have a whole lot of iron, and you're not manufacturing a whole lot. You just need a couple of pieces. Maybe you've run into a couple of these things inside a recent POI that you could go back and clean out, rather than having to make some in a forge. Um, I'm just going to kind of look at these things right here. You guys can pick them out. Can you see all of them? Yeah, maybe. There we go. Okay, all of these things here have forged iron in them. Now, each one of them have a different health, so it may or may not even be worth tearing apart. I can tell you 
those right there, the restore power containers, the, the generators or whatever, are not worth tearing apart for forged iron. Neither is the Big Mama Jama uh, lockbox over there. Definitely not worth tearing apart for forged iron. Not when there are so many other places you can get it because the health on those is like 10,000. And most people who are looking for forged iron out of materials are probably in the 1 to level 10 ish and level 10 is kind of pushing it. Level 10 you probably already have a forge going. So um, you're probably working with a ranch and maybe a level 1 or a level 2 ranch. So not actually worth tearing those guys apart but since they actually gave me forged iron I put them over here anyway. I just would not recommend doing it. Uh, some ways that you could probably get it that are very very easy are broken workbenches that you can find in world. You can also find, oh, and that one too, but not the Broken Forge. The Broken Forge does not give you forged iron. Also, broken generators, broken battery banks, the table saw, the workout materials. Also, these saves right here. After you've broken through them, gotten all your loot out, you can break them further with a wrench and get forged iron from them. Um, the gun safe, I wouldn't recommend it because it's got a lot of health. Also, these guys right here give you forged iron as well. Forged steel too, but you know we're going to get into that when we go over there and talk about the forged steel. Um, but that's all of the forged iron, just in case you need a couple of pieces to make something early game and you haven't quite gotten to making the forge, or you are flat out refusing to take any intellect points, you are planning on finding only schematics and using those points elsewhere, which I can kind of understand because you kind of feel like you're locked into taking strength and intellect with the way the skill tree sits. You kind of have to take those. Either that or you're making huge sacrifices and not getting a whole lot in return um, because intellect and strength are kind of overpowered in comparison to the other skill trees, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, um, also one thing to note, this right here is a broken solar panel. A broken solar panel, panel found in a POI. That's the reason I've got this guy sitting right here with a question mark and that I'll explain in just a minute. But this one right here is one that you would make or buy and place in world. This one right here is one that you would find in a POI that you can break down and get iron from. The one that you place down, also the um, workbenches that you place down, the traps that you place down, all of those things, if you have placed them down, chances are if you break them, you will not get those materials back. These are broken workbenches you will find in World. Don't try to place your workbench and then wrench it to try and pick it back up. That's not how you do it. You have to do a land claim block. Uh, me. That's fine. Okay, um, I set that down right there. Okay, my land claim is down. I place down these workbenches and if I hold E, it gives me this hand or it gives me the open. If I go to open, it just opens up the workbench. If I use the hand, it picks it up. And in order to cancel, press escape. If you accidentally held E too long on your workbench and it starts picking it up, if you hit escape, it'll stop the action from happening. Um, just be careful that if you do that, make sure you empty out whatever's inside your containers first, because you'll lose it if you don't. I think the inventory might empty out into your pocket, but things like the forge where you smelt stuff into it, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. It does. Okay, so if you have something like sitting in the output, that will go to your inventory. But if you have stuff like smelted into your forge, it will not come out. It will, it will, you'll just lose it all. So be very, very careful of that. This has to do with the broken machines that are else world. Okay, and now this is all forged iron. This is all forged steel. Now, understand that this is a broken vending machine if you go over and try to wrench a non-broken vending machine it will shock the crap out of you and if you continue to try it it will kill you so be very careful um these two guys right here they give you both forged iron and forged steel so pretty good to get both of them but both of them have a lot of health i mean like a lot of health um you would be better off going for one of these uh, i actually have these containers in here the transformers and the street lights and the gun safe. Did I? I didn't put the gun safe out. Thank God, man. Ah, the gun safe needed to go right there. Okay, uh, now it's got the whole thing. Uh, the gun safe gives you both as well. So the gun safe might be one of the better ones to take apart, but ultimately the transformers have the least amount of health and the lights have the least amount of health. 
So you can go in, get a bit of forged steel because there's some small things that you might want to make towards the beginning of the game before you get the crucible. And this could actually help you get the steel that you need. Okay, so between the forged iron, the forged steel, and then we've got brass. Now, for those who are new to the game, you probably don't understand the significance of brass in general. Brass is one of the few only materials that you really can't harvest anywhere, so to speak. There's not a node for you to dig down to it or nothing like that. So brass is important because that's your bullet casings. And if you've ever fought a horde, you know, you need a lot of bullets. Whether your traps, your, your actual gun, you and your friend's guns, it doesn't matter. You use a lot of bullets. Um, so there's a lot of different things in the game that will give you brass, but none of it gives you very much at one time, and all of it takes a while to process. So we have got all kinds of manners of stuff and things. I don't know if you guys knew this, but these little orange bits right here actually give you brass whenever you wrench them. Any of the lights that are in world that have got like that brass finish to them, those give them to you. Also, the uh, brass faucets, they, those give them to you. The air conditioning units. Now, these guys, hold on. Uh, the air conditioning units, the radiators, and cars will give you a. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> They will give you a brass radiator, which you can either scrap in your pocket, scrap into your workbench, which gives you the exact same amount, or smelt into your uh, forge, which gives you the best possible deal. It just takes forever, especially since they only stack to five. Um, since they stack to five, you would have to constantly go back and put more into it in order to keep it smelting, but it's the one that gives you the best deal for brass when it smelts instead of scrapping. Um, so that's with any of these things. Whenever you put them inside the forge, they give you the better deal, but you can scrap it into your pocket and scrap it into your workbench. In some cases, when you're out and about going through 5,000 POIs, you may not want to carry a stack of brass, a stack of bullet casings, a stack of doorknobs, a stack of, a snack of candlesticks, and a stack of brass trophies, in which case you might actually want to scrap them in your pocket and allow them to stack on top of each other. That way you're not carrying as many different sorts of brass items. You lose a bit, but you gain, I don't know, three, four slots to carry new things home with you. And that could actually stop you from picking up things that you might want to sell. And the reason why I bring that up is because dukes can actually be smelted down to give you brass. If you've gotten to the point in the game where you really bought all of the stuff that you need, you really don't need a whole lot. You're still kind of doing missions just to be doing things. Then you're probably going to have a few casino tokens to fling around. At least until we start having to pay the Duke back in the next alpha, assuming it happens in the next alpha. Um, so we have a lot of loot and not a whole lot of stuff to do with it. So you could take your brass items, your uh, brass casino tokens, and smelt those down as well. Um, there are also the ways of getting more brass is doorknobs. If you find the book Wasteland Treasures Volume 5, you'll get doorknobs every time you break a door. So basically, you just walk through all of the buildings that you do normally and break the door so that you can get the doorknobs and take the doorknobs, smelt them down into more brass. And there's a couple of others in here that just kind of seem odd, so I stuck them over here. The parking meter, if you wrench it, it gives you Duke's Casino tokens, so it kind of made its way over here too. It doesn't actually give you brass, but it gives you Duke's Casino tokens, which you could possibly use to make your um <laughs> to make your ammo i i wouldn't rec i don't necessarily recommend smelting your money i have done it before i've gotten to that point a couple of times in a server where i had enough money i didn't need any more money i had all the things that i needed so i started smelting my money and turning it into bullets so that's it's entirely possible plus these brand new bells that look really really cool also Whenever you wrench them, give you brass. Not a whole lot of brass, but they give you brass. Uh, so that is, let's see. Oh, there is one other thing. One other thing. I got a couple of question marks on here because these right here, these clawed bathtubs used to give us brass, but I've already taken apart like four or five of them, not gotten any brass for them. I'm not sure if that's a glitch or if it's intentionally been taken out. You guys let me know on your games whether or not that's a thing. Right now I'm running 20.3 B3 
on my game. So if there's any changes later on and they put the brass back into that, I do apologize. But as of right this second, that's not giving brass. Also, I put these guys right over here because during my first couple of days, I haven't actually tried a whole bunch. I tried to break some while I was doing this whole thing and it didn't do it. But um, when I first started playing, I took apart a couple of booths trying to find leather, but it also gave me money, which I in turn sold for Duke's Casino Tokens, which also gives you brass. So I stuck that over here with a couple of question marks just in case because it's kind of a thing that may or may not actually be in the game. I couldn't get it to give me the money this time, but it could just be bad luck because this character's not running with all of the perks that my other character had at the time. Um, also, vehicles will give you all kinds of items. Out of all of the things you could possibly take apart, vehicles are one of the better items to take apart because you will get practically all of your base materials to build all of your stuff will come from a car. Just about. Just about all of them. Um, plus, you'll get the radiators, you'll get engines, you'll get uh, batteries. The batteries will give you lead, which you also need for ammo. Uh, but lead can also be mined, which is the reason why it's not included. Um, but you can also get a radiator from this, which you can in turn smelt or scrap down to brass. So these are all of the items that I have checked. These are, and you guys can... I don't know why I'm leaning like somehow or another that takes my frame out of you guys' way. You can look at this list. There's a lot of stuff in there, but these are all things that I checked to see if they gave brass, steel, forged iron, and it did not give me any of those items, so it came over here. And there's all of those items. Um, there's a couple of items I was very, very surprised to find out that you do not get any of those items from. Say, most of these traps and stuff, you put forged iron or forged steel or both into making them, but if you scrap them down, you will not get it back. Um, what I, what I mean by scrapping is if you break it down, you will not get it back. You need to pick it up. Even if you have to pick up your land claim or, well, break your land claim and move it to pick up your traps, it's better than breaking your traps. Just remember, you will not get all those materials back. Uh, so that's one thing that I have discovered. Also, there's a weirdness going on with this guy right here. This one is actually broken, but it's not broken. It does give you steel. This top right here does give you steel, but as of right now, for some reason, it glitches out. It just still sits there as if it's an entity that just will not disappear. I can still jump on it and move. I just can't break it anymore unless I do that. And then because of collision, it's gone. Even though I've already scrapped it down earlier. I don't I don't know what to tell you guys. I don't know what's going on with that. But there it is. That's a, a problem that I came across. Was there anything else? Um, all right, guys. So that's what we talked about. We talked about the POIs and where to find these items in world in case you need them. Uh, just remember, as you progress through the game, continue to mine. Um, continue to mine. Continue to use your forges. Uh, the main thing that you have to keep up with, though, is the brass because of your ammo. And while you can go get the stuff to make your gunpowder, the uh, nitrate and the coal, pretty easy and you can go get the lead for the bullet tips the brass is the hard part of the bullets the things that you actually have to really work to go out in the world and find um there is a theory and i think it was disproved last yeah last alpha i don't think anybody has done the maths on it this time i think it's probably the same but it is actually better to smelt your dukes then go buy brass that's how it was in last alpha I haven't actually checked on the one-to-one -one ratios on it for this alpha as of last alpha it was a better deal to keep your casino tokens and smelt those down rather than going to buy brass and smelting it down because you're spending your casino tokens on the brass and also um it's better to buy the components to ammo rather than buying the full ammo because it's cheaper and it's also well, obviously going to be cheaper for you to go out in the world and find stuff that you need. Also, if for some reason or another you want to sell your, say, your lead trophies, your lead weights, your brass trophies, the doorknobs and stuff like that, it you get a better deal supposedly by breaking them down into the base items instead of selling the whole item. So there you go. I will see you guys in the next episode. You have a wonderful day, wonderful night, and you stay shiny. Bye.